My 2021 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Willys has been almost the perfect daily driver for me. Uh, I ordered this car brand new. I got it in September of 2021, had it about 19 months, put about 19,000 miles on it so far. Uh, so today I'm just going to go over it a little bit. We're going to talk about some of my ownership thoughts, why I ended up getting this thing. And uh, we're going to just give it a little baby review. Now, I do want to note we are uh, trying out some new technology with the microphone on the channel here except it's like the windiest day ever today and hopefully the wind doesn't totally ruin the video but we're gonna see how that goes we're gonna give this thing a quick review and uh, let's dive right into it all right so just a quick little history uh the jeep wrangler was actually based on the original jeeps used in the 40s during world war ii um they made a variation of different jeep vehicles over the years um but they kind of never used the wrangler name up until 1986. Now, since 1986 they've done four different generations of the wrangler um this one is considered the jl generation which came out for the 2018 model year now i am filming this uh april 2023 they just announced a few days ago the new facelifted version for the JL generation, um, which is going to have a bigger screen, a little bit change uh, in design and the grill and stuff, and they're going to offer some more features like power seats and whatnot. So this is still the current generation. You can still go into the dealership and buy a uh, Wrangler JL today. And uh, let's dive into some of the features of the vehicle. Now, one thing I like to do when we do any review like this, I like to just go over the modifications on the vehicle just so everybody is completely aware. And I've only done two things this, and they're all they're both very minor. So the first thing was I put these black lug nuts on, but unfortunately they were not the highest quality because they kind of the finish is worn off on them. So I do need to get these refinished. Uh, the stock ones are chrome, kind of, which is weird because nothing else on the car is chrome. And the only other thing is I got these windows tinted here. Um, the back ones were tinted from the factory. These just match the back. Other than that, completely stock. I have not changed anything else out on this. And it is exactly the way it left the factory other than those two small cosmetic items. All right, so the name Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Willys, it is an absolute mouthful for no reason. Um, but it's actually pretty simple. So the Unlimited just means that this is a four-door vehicle. They do still offer the Wrangler in a two-door trim level. And then the Willys is just the package that comes with this. So... Um, the Willys package is kind of a good medium of everything. Um, it's not as extreme off-road as like the Rubicon, but it's also got some extra capabilities that is not in the standard Wrangler. So uh, for starters, you do get some cosmetic things such as this black grill here in the front. And then you do get these 17 inch black wheels on 33 inch uh, Firestone mud terrain tires. Uh, these kind of give it a nice beefy look, which I do like. And then you also get these rock rails on both sides here. Moving to the back, there is a four-wheel drive decal that throws back to the Jeeps from the 40s there. And then one of the biggest changes, uh, if you look and see the red suspension components down there, um, that is something that is taken from the higher Rubicon trim level. You do get that on the Wrangler as well for the Willys trim. Now, they do offer a, another very similar trim, Willy Sport. That just takes away some of the uh, luxury features like power windows, power locks, um, but you still get the additional off-road and cosmetic components. So I'm going to go over some of the cool exterior options and features on this. Um, I don't want to do a full-blown review just because there's so many of those on the Wranglers out here. Uh, but let's start with this color. So this is limited edition Gecko Clear Coat. Um, I did pick this color. And when this color came out, it was one of a handful of colors I did for the 2021 model year. That was the only year you could get it, and it was only available for a couple of months. Now, because of the limited availability of this color, um, they did not make very many of them. And in fact, uh, also due to the time that this was made, so this was built in 2021, and they were having severe issues with uh, getting parts and supplies and all that from the pandemic. And when I ordered this, uh, I worked at the dealership at the time, and the sales manager ordered four for the lot, and he ordered mine as a sold order. Mine was the only one that we got in that color. So it, I really, you don't see them that often. And I was actually able to email Jeep and they were able to confirm that this spec is a one of one. Uh, a couple other cool options I was able to get um, on this windshield here. This is actually a Gorilla Glass windshield, which might sound kind of stupid, um, but basically it's stronger and it comes with a two year warranty with the vehicle if it cracks at all. The Wrangler windshields are known, they're notorious for breaking just because, I mean, as you can see, it's so upright and it just it picks up stone chips like crazy. So I figured that was worth, the, at the time, it was a $95 option. They've since raised that to like $495, which is insane. Um, but the next biggest thing here is the top. So on the Wrangler, they offer four different top options. They offer a soft top, they offer a hard top, 
that's uh, black. They offer a painted hard top, and then they offer this, which is the one touch power sliding soft top. So as you can see, there's just a little button in the interior here. You just hit that right there, and this whole top piece slides back and gives you kind of an open air feel. In addition, these two rear windows here, they do come out. You can remove these completely, and you have a side storage bag in the back that can store those. Now, um, some people actually think this is stupid because they think that the Wrangler should be a real old school, you know, you gotta take it off yourself thing. Um, but this is so much easier. Now, it is an expensive option. Um, on the Willys, it was part of the Sun and Sound Group, which is a $4,190 option. Uh, you do get some upgraded audio equipment with that as well, but the biggest thing you're paying for is this roof. Now, obviously they paint it to match the car. Um, and like I said, you do get this nice folding top here um, that's really easy to use. You can use it up to, I believe, 61 or 62 miles an hour. Um, so it's very nice, um, and it's one option that I definitely think, you know, just for convenience and ease of use, um, is great to have. Now, if you are really ambitious, this whole top does still come off. The only thing, though, in my opinion, that you're not getting with the full top off experience is you still have the back window in. But, I mean, it's just, it'd be a huge pain to take this whole thing off, and then you've got to store this gigantic piece somewhere. So I think that uh, I'm perfectly fine with just the sliding power top there. Another cool feature of the Sun and Sound Group is you do get this Alpine audio system. Uh, it has a sub mounted in the trunk here from the factory, actually. And then you get nine speakers throughout the cabin, which in, they're included right up there, as you can kind of see, uh, which is really nice because they don't put them in the doors. So that way, if you decide to remove the doors, um, you do get that full you know, audio experience still. A couple other cool things. They do paint this roll bar, so it actually does look kind of cool when you have the windows out and everything because you can see all that painted stuff. And then you also have some extra storage underneath the back here. Um, I have the Jeep uh, trail rated bag in here. This was a $195 option. Uh, it's got a tow strap and a couple off-roading accessories, which unfortunately, I hate to admit it, um, I've had to use that before. Kind of had a little incident off-roading. But anyways, um, otherwise, it's actually a very nice and practical cargo area. These seats both lay completely flat, so you have actually a pretty decent cargo area if you need to. And then one of my other things I think is cool, they put this little badge that tells you your water fording depths on the back. Very small touch, but I always thought that that was a cool looking detail. All right, so moving under the hood here, um, this is the 3.6 liter V6 engine in this car. Uh, they also offer a 2 liter uh, 4 cylinder turbo. Um, I wasn't as big of a fan of that. This is just a personal preference thing, um, which is why I went with the V6. Um, it's got adequate power, 285 horsepower, 260 foot pounds of torque. Um, it's not winning any drag races, and it does feel a little underpowered if it's like loaded up with people and you're going uphill uh, but it's fine I mean you're not you know not the purpose of this vehicle and then for the transmission you can either get a six-speed manual or an eight-speed automatic which this one does have um, I know there's a lot of people that are gonna think that I'm not an enthusiast I didn't get the manual but I'll talk a little bit more about why I got the automatic instead of the manual uh, in a little bit all right, so moving on to the interior, um, first thing you're going to notice, it's actually pretty well designed, um, but there's not an insane amount of high-end material. So the seats are basic cloth, uh, you can get black or tan, and they are manually adjustable. Uh, 2024 is going to be the first time ever in a rain that you can get power seats. So that is something that is just kept in tradition just due to the water um, capabilities that it has. If you get water in the cab and they want the power seats to still work. A couple other things, this does have the larger screen, actually have exactly 19,000 miles on it as well. Um, and then this has the upgrade 8.4 inch screen here as well. Um, it also has the cold weather group, so you get the heated seats and steering wheel. Um, and it's, you know, overall nothing too crazy on here, um, but it is pretty well equipped. One thing that drives me absolutely nuts, I don't know if you guys can tell, this parking brake is like off to the side here. And every time I look at it, this drives me nuts. I don't know why that's a design thing or if that was just something they missed at the factory. Drives me absolutely crazy. Um, and then another thing that throws a lot of people off is your windows are actually in the middle on a Wrangler, um, which is something like that, uh, that a lot of people don't like. Another cool thing, um, they still use an old school transfer case here. So this has a two speed transfer case. Um, you know, it's got four high and four low. And I mean, you still got to manually shift it and gear yourself there. Uh, there's no electronic buttons there. Some of the newer Wranglers, they do have an electronic transfer case, which is kind of unusual. Um, but yeah, they still go old school with the Willys here. One of the other features I optioned out with was the uh, two safety packages. So I do have adaptive cruise control on here as well as the blind spot, as you can see in that little triangle off in the corner. 
Um, it has blind spot monitoring as well. Um, there's also some sensors up here. This is all for the uh, adaptive cruise. But it also has like emergency braking and stuff like that. Um, and with that as well, you do get the parking sensors as well. Another kind of weird thing, um, the auto start stop. You have to have that on here. There is no way on the V6 to not get the auto start stop, unfortunately. Um, and then the only other weird button in here is this is off-road cruise control. This is something if you're in four low that you can use. Um, kind of a weird thing, but obviously it does have off-road capability and they did want to add that in the ring. Another thing with the Wrangler is that the community is pretty strong. So one of the more unusual things is that people will wave at you and other Wranglers when they drive by. Um, but there's also this whole thing with these ducks. So people will just leave these ducks on your Jeep if, if they like your Jeep, I guess. Um, and all of these have been given to me. I've not bought a single one of these, and they're just kind of amassing. I've, got, I've gotten rid of a couple of them, but they just keep kind of popping back up. So definitely a weird thing if you own a Wrangler. All right, so driving the Wrangler, um, first things first, there's nothing too much to say about the actual driving experience. Obviously, it's very utilitarian, um, and it's very, you know, built to a certain purpose. Um, and it does a great job at that, but it definitely doesn't give you some crazy driving feel or characteristic. Um, I will say, the handling, I think, personally, is improved significantly over the previous Wrangler generation. Um, and I do think that it actually drives a lot more like a normal SUV versus a brick with four wheels, which is how I felt the other ones drove. Um, so I've had this Wrangler for about 19 months, put about 19,000 miles on it, and um, I guess I ordered it brand new, ordered it in May of 2021, waited four months for them to build it, um, and then I ended up taking delivery in September of 2021. So I've you know had experience with it, I've taken it to, I want to say, 12 different states, been to three national parks with it, I've had it off-roading twice, um, and I just, I mean, I've put it through all sorts of different paces and all sorts of tests so um, a couple things that I've really enjoyed about my ownership experience of it one is the practicality of it um, the cargo space it's got like 72 cubic feet if you pull the seats down or something like that and I've been able to fit a crazy amount of stuff back here I got my whole kitchen remodel fit in here um, you saw the video of us getting the suit of armor in here I mean all sorts of things I've, I've had a haul with this and it's done a great job at it and it's actually surprised me at how much I've been able to carry with it um, I came out of re leasing a Ram before this which I ended up getting rid of because of the COVID prices they were it was too good to pass up um, but I you know so I ordered this after the fact now the main reason on why I ordered specifically a Wrangler Unlimited Willys automatic was due to the lease rates so I do lease this vehicle um, and the Wrangler is known to have a phenomenal residual value and particularly at the time when I ordered this the Unlimited Willys automatic was you know through the roof with residual value so that was able to get me this wrangler which stickered for right around fifty one thousand dollars um for under four hundred dollars a month and i have to put a penny down so that that to me i mean that was a huge thing and i know there's many people that come at me and say well you lease it it's not yours you know all you know people there's a lot of people that don't like leasing um it worked great for me i worked at the dealership where i leased it from at the time and you know I, so I was familiar, I knew how leases work, I'm aware of all the you know, caveats of leasing, um, and honestly, I, I really couldn't ask for you know, a better scenario to have this thing. Um, and honestly, for the payment too, there's not really much, you know, I could have a pretty, not the greatest used car, or I could drive around a brand new Wrangler for four years. Um, I got the custom order, pick the color, pick the options, all sorts of stuff. So that was a huge thing for me too, um, on why I got this particularly. Um, and honestly, that was the way I could justify getting into it. I, there's no way I would spend seven, eight hundred dollars a month financing this thing. Just not worth it to me at that point. Um, I'd rather just have something, you know, a little cheaper. So that's a huge thing for me on why I got this in particular. Um, but you know, ultimately, it's been a really good vehicle for me. Um, one cool thing, if you do get a new Jeep vehicle um, starting from 2022, and they did it for like the Wranglers and stuff before, like this one at 21. Um, the first three oil changes and tire rotations completely complimentary. Um, they covered under what they call the Jeep Wave program. Very nice touch. Um, I really appreciated that going into it. And obviously it's under warranty. Um, I've taken it in for a couple warranty things, but there's really nothing, you know, that I can say like, oh, this thing was, you know, giving me all these issues. It's actually been really good for me um, and I've been pretty happy with it. So ultimately, you know, I, I think I'm going to keep it for a while. I mean, I do have the itch always to get something different, but with the way rates are right now and what else is available on the market, I don't really think there's anything else that could replace this the way it does for me. Um, and I guess the last point and why I decided to go with the Wrangler, um, I wanted something that was very Midwest capable. And what I mean by that is I, you know, we get some pretty crappy weather, but we also get 
gorgeous days. I mean, today it's April, it's 77 and sunny. Um, and, you know, two weeks ago we had snow on the ground or something like that. So, you know, I like that it's, it's insanely capable when it comes to snow. Um, but I also like that I can take the doors off, I can put the top back, and have all sorts of fun with it in the summer. So, so in, you know, in conclusion, with the practicality, with the residual values, and with the fun of it being the, you know, Midwest dual vehicle, um, I'm really happy with the vehicle. And, you know, I do think it serves me very well. Now, the caveat was, I said at the beginning, this was almost the perfect daily driver. And there are two things that I'm going to, you know, knock it for. First being the gas mileage. Uh, it claims 18 to 22 on my window sticker. And I have maybe, maybe gotten 19 on the highway at one point. Um, it is, I have not gotten anywhere close to what it claims I should be able to get. And I don't know if that's, I don't know why, um, but that is just not something that it has been able to do for me. Uh, the second thing is driving on the highway. So due to the shape and the build of it, I mean, not only is it noisy on the highway, but it's just not the most comfortable. You know, you can kind of feel the wind knocking it around a little bit, and it definitely is noisy. And, you know, I, at one point, I did the 4,000-mile road trip in this thing. I went up to Glacier National Park, basically, and back. Um, and, you know, that was a long highway drive to get there. And, I mean, that was, you know, it... It gets old after a while, and if I had a job that I daily commuted on the highway, I probably wouldn't wouldn't have a Wrangler, to be fair. Um, but I knew that going into it. It's not like I got this in and I'm like, oh, this thing's atrocious on the highway. You know that going into it. And I think most people understand that. Um, but that is the one you know precautionary thing I would say to anybody that's thinking about getting into one of these. Um, but you know, it honestly, overall, it's done its purpose well for me. Um, like I said, I look forward to you know being able to do some more stuff with it. And uh, I don't know, I, I definitely would have another Wrangler again, um, but I guess we'll just have to see, you know, what kind of comes from the future here. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Wrangler kind of somewhat review and ownership summary, um, but I really enjoyed the vehicle. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, and please subscribe if you wanna see some more content like this. And uh, if there's any, you know, suggestion that you have for future videos, um, please let us know. Uh, this has been The Chooches. My name is Brock, and we'll see you next time. John, I'd say we hit that puddle a little too hard, bud. <laughs> I think we sent her a little too hard, bud. Oh my gosh. I just recorded that whole thing, and uh, I accidentally hit the button twice, and it didn't record any of it, so yay.